Welcome, in this video we're looking at cracking passwords with Hashcat. So we have to do a few things. First we need to do some lab files. So here's my GitHub and here's the location. We will be downloading some PowerShell scripts to generate some users. We also have to make sure that our Windows 10 victim is allowed to run PowerShell scripts because again Instead of you creating the users, I've already created the script. We just have to be able to run it. The assumption is you already have a interpreter shell. So when I get into my Kali machine, that interpreter shell will already be open. After my interpreter shell is open, we will continue on with performing a hash dump. We saving the hash values and we're going to be using hash calc and the associated word lists to break those passwords. So a question that I often get is how do I allow PowerShell scripts to be ran? So on the Windows 10 victim, navigate to PowerShell. Uh, you have to run PowerShell as an admin. We need to set the execution policy to remotely signed. That is because by default, Windows 10 doesn't allow PowerShell scripts that were created remotely to be ran on a local machine. So I created the PowerShell scripts. In order for you to run them, we have to actually allow for those files to be ran. All of them are in GitHub. You can look at all of the commands to verify that there is nothing malicious going on. So here with the execution policy, the four default, the four actual types of execution are gonna be restricted, remotely signed, all signed or unrestricted. For what we're doing, remotely signed should work. If it doesn't work in your area, you may have to choose unrestricted. When we are done with this lab, we are going to redo the set execution and we're gonna restore our Windows 10 victim to not allow for PowerShell scripts to be ran. So we're gonna reset the set execution policy back to restricted. Because again, we're only doing the PowerShell portion to allow you to create the 50 plus users we'll be using in this lab. So let's go ahead, let's jump on our Windows 10 machine so we can create our users. All right, so I'm on my Windows 10 victim. I'm gonna open up a web browser. Edge is the only thing installed, so that's what I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna go to Google. I'm gonna go to GitHub, type in my name. All right, so we are doing this course. We want to download this guy right here. I'm gonna go ahead and copy the URL so that I can see my tree, I can see my main, and I can see my subdirectory. GitHub's a little weird. Uh, I don't want it to download all of the top level content because I'm gonna be adding more content as we go. So I'm gonna use what's called down git. GitHub. And the nice thing here is it's going to be this down git GitHub page. And I'm going to go ahead and download the directory. It's going to download all the files that I need. And it's only going to download the path that I wanted. So I'm going to go ahead and copy all that content to my desktop. Close all of the windows go ahead and open this guy. So, first of all, you're gonna notice there are some add, there's some remove, and there's some word lists. So, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go, uh, add our intro. But again, because this is Windows 10, the default security, it will not let me just execute these in a PowerShell. I have to be able to set them so that I should get a, a denied because these were created off a different machine and that's what the red was, was a deny. So I'm gonna go ahead and get to my PowerShell. I wanna run it as an admin. And again, the only reason I am doing this 
is so that, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do CD, colon, users, student, desktop, crack. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the add user intro. Intro PS. And again, that's the red that it's not loading. Again, it's because we're not authorized. That is where the set execution policy comes into play. We need to set it so we can do remotely signed and go ahead and do yes to all. And that means we can actually run our intro uh, power, uh, PowerShell. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna show you what it's doing. So right now, those are my users. I'm gonna be adding in five users. And that's actually one of the things that I said at the very beginning. You may have to do this as, instead of remotely sign, unrestricted and yes to all and run the power add user intro ps1 again so only run if you trust it so we're going to go ahead and run it yes and it created five users if you refresh the computer management, we can now see the users populate and all of these have passwords. So instead of you having to randomly create these, I did it for you. When we are done, we'll be running the remove intro and we'll also be setting this back to restricted. That way we can leave the machine kind of how we found it. All right, so that took care of the lab files and allowing our victim to run PowerShell scripts. So again, the assumption is you already have a interpreter shell to our victim. If you don't, pause the video, get it set up. We've done that in previous videos, so you, you should know how to do it. All right, so I am in my Kali machine. I have the interpreter session open, and my question mark. What I'm looking for is the ability to dump the password hashes from my victim. Happens to be that hash dump is already uh, towards the bottom, so hash dump. So interesting, this is actually a very common issue. So we're gonna work through the uh, problem. We're gonna see what we can do to correct this. All right, so what I want to do is I want to see exactly why it's doing this. So I want to go ahead and do a system info. It's our victim. It's a 64-bit machine. It is using Windows 10. So it shows two users logged in. I want to see what services are running and who's running them. So this actually is going to be important coming up because one of the issues when we're trying to attach one of the system services like the SAM database is the user we're running it as makes it a little bit more difficult. So to verify, what we're going to do is we're going to do a get PID. So our current PID is 6352. We're running it as the user. The user is an admin, but you know what? Let's just double check. Get priv. So so we have the appropriate permissions, 
But if we do our hash dump again, it's going to fail. So one of the things we can do is maybe let's try to get our system's permission. So <laughs> our new permissions. So we should be able to run this. But again, it's going to fail. So let's try, instead of uh, manipulating our users, let's go ahead and let's do a PS. Let's try to migrate to a different uh, PID. So what we can do is we can do migrate and we can do, let's do 6836. So we can now see that our PID is sixty-eight thirty-six. So now let's try our hash dump again. And it actually does work. So whatever reason it's a little weird. But for whatever reason, we have to be a, a using a system process, and we're going to be stealing the primary token, the token that was started as a system, since the uh, system as you get system uh, function wasn't really working. So here are our hashes. Let's go ahead and copy them, and we will go ahead new document. Empty file. Pass uh, password. Hashes. And paste it. And save it. Minimize our interpreter shell. And now we can start doing our password. All right, so now that we have our hashes, what are, what exactly is this hash? So I'm going to take Bill Collins, and I want to break down this hash so I understand what it means first. So here I have the Bill Collins hash. Bill Collins colon 1002 colon hexadecimal number colon another large number. So in reality, I've already broken it down. Bill Collins, the first group is the username. The second, the 1002, is the relative ID. Basically, this is the last four of the SID of the user. The next column, the next step separated by the colons, is the LM hash. And then the last uh, column, separated again by the colon, is the uh, NTLM hash. That way, we can now look at any of our hash dumps and we can understand a little bit better of that structure. So there are some limitations to has, uh, Hashcat. And one of them is it doesn't like the way that we do our dumps. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I want to remove all of the additional content that we're not gonna be using. So I wanna get rid of the LM hash, the uh, RID and the name. I want just our in, uh, NT element hash. So I'm going to go ahead and modify this. And again, oh. get rid of the username. And go ahead and clean that up. Alright, so here we have just our NT LM hashes. I'm going to go ahead and save it. All right, so now that we have our hashes, first thing I want to do is I want to go to Firefox. We did this on our Windows 10 machine, but one thing we did not do was we didn't get the word lists on our attacker. So 
So I'm gonna do get tab. I wanna go ahead and download my files. I wanna save them. And I wanna open it. Close out of Firefox. So right now we are doing our word list. We're doing our intro, which is perfectly fine. Other labs, we may use the other word lists, but for now, that's the one that we need. And back out everything else. All right, so let's go ahead and open up our hash calc. So we can do it a few different ways. Application, password attacks, hash calc. First thing I want to point out, here's the structure. And we're going to see things like this slash or attack M1000. That's basically defining the hash type. Here are all the hash types that are available. So lots of different types of hashes that can be cracked. So here we have, if we're cracking LM, we are cracking NTLM, so that's what we want to do. So first thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm at my desktop. So PWD, I'm not, so change to my desktop, ls. I want to make sure that I can see both my word list and my hashes. All right, so from there, I'm going to be doing a hash cat, tag m1000. That says that we're using the uh, NT hash. I'm going to be doing a dictionary attack, so TAC A O. I'm going to be doing a double TAC show, because I want it to print out uh, what I'm doing. Space, drag in my hash, space, drag in my password list, space. Hit enter, and it will process, and it should come back with five hashes with five passwords. If we compare these, we can see what users have what passwords. So one question I get is, we had nine users there's only five hashes, uh, five hashes that were cracked. That means these other hashes probably were blank passwords. And you'll also notice they repeat. The other users that were uh, in Windows on our victim didn't have any passwords set. So that's why we only received five hashes. So that is how we do this in Hashcat. So this is, again, a basic intro to our word lists. Remember, when you are done, remove the uh, users added on our victim and reset the PowerShell script so that it is restricted. So remove intro. Run once, yes. That deleted all of my users. And next, set uh, set execution policy to restricted to all. All right, this is how to do basic cracking with Hashcat. If you have any questions, please reach out.